St. Louis. We are here again in my kitchen to show you how to make marinara. Marinara is the tomato sauce that you would find on spaghetti. You can use it for pizza sauce. It's, it has a lot of uses. So we're going to get started, but who remembers what the first thing is we have to do? Wash our hands. So I'm going to go over to my sink and I'm going to wash my hands. If you remember, we want 20 to 30 seconds of this. The, uh, the CDC recommends 20, but I always try to do 30. I'm not singing for you today, but you can make up your own silly song. I'm counting to 30 in my head as I speak. I'm making sure I get my fingernails very good. And that water's really hot. I don't know if you can see the steam coming up from how hot I have my water heater set. But it's hot. Hot water is more effective, but soap will kill a lot of things even if you have cooler water. I have a clean towel. I'm going to dry my hands. So these are tomatoes. These are Roma tomatoes. Uh, this is my personal favorite for making marinara sauce. Any good ripe tomato will work. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to take the skins off our tomatoes because the skin will give us a texture in our sauce that's not very desirable. So to do that, on my stove, I have a pot of water and it has come to a full boil. I started that on my own, but all you have to do is put water in a pot and boil it. In this bowl, we have ice water. That's going to be very, very important. And I'm using a paring knife. I'm holding it carefully. I'm making an X across the top and an X across the bottom. I'm gonna do that with all of them. So I'm gonna take my tomatoes. I had a bowl here for it, but I think I can hold these. And I'm gonna go over to the stove. If you look at the water, it is boiling. You wanna get as close as you can stand before letting go of your tomato. Don't hold it way up high and drop it in because the water will splatter and you could burn yourself. So we're gonna let these boil for about a minute to two minutes. And if you notice the water stopped boiling so heavily once we dropped our tomatoes in, that's because the tomatoes were cooler than the water so it lowered the temperature of the water. We want them at a full boil. And what we're gonna look for is the skin to start peeling away. So once this comes to a full boil, again, it'll only take about a minute or so. I'm gonna put my apron on so I don't get my shirt dirty. All right. <clears throat> While our tomatoes are boiling, we can get some of our spices together that we're going to need. It's not gonna boil for a long time, so we don't wanna start anything that's gonna be time consuming until after we transfer those to some ice water. I'm gonna grab my measuring spoons because I forgot to get those out. And I have an empty small bowl here. It doesn't have to look like this. It can be any kind of small bowl. And I'm going to measure out some of the spices I'm going to use so that it saves time later. We're gonna use oregano. I'm using dried oregano. And I'm going to put, for the amount of sauce I'm making, we're gonna need about two teaspoons. So I'm gonna put two teaspoons of oregano into this little bowl. And then I'm going to put a tablespoon of basil. A tablespoon is equal to three teaspoons, by the way, just in case you need to know that. My lid doesn't want to go on. And I'm going to need a couple of bay leaves. So I'm going to just put those on top of that as well. We're also going to add some salt and pepper later, but I like to add that towards the end 
because if you get too much salt in, you can't take it out, but you can always add it later. So I like to wait until the end for that. We're also going to use fennel seeds. If you don't have seeds, you can use ground fennel. If you don't have any fennel, it's okay. You can skip it, but it does add a little bit of extra. However, the fennel we're going to pop with our olive oil, which I'll show you later, but we don't want to mix it in with our other spices because it needs to be popped first. So we're gonna set the spices down and go back over to our stove and we're gonna check our tomatoes. Mm, they are boiling. This one is starting to come apart. Can you see how the skin is starting to peel off the tomato? We're gonna let them go maybe 30 seconds longer because that's the only one doing what I want it to do right now. I will grab our bowl of ice water. It's just ice and water, just what it sounds like. And that one tomato that the skin is starting to peel. Can you see that? See how it's peeling away? We're gonna plunge it into the ice water. That's gonna cool it down quickly and make it easy for us to peel those skins off. Sometimes they're a little stubborn. Sometimes you have to boil them for two or three minutes. Usually about one minute is all it takes. But these are being just slightly stubborn. All right, while we let those tomatoes boil for a minute longer, let's come back over to our cutting board. As I showed you last time, I have a damp towel under my cutting board and that keeps my cutting board from sliding around because we don't want it to slide. And we also always want to get our knives off of the cutting surface because we don't want extra knives on the surface that we don't need because you could bump into it and cut yourself. We're going to be using garlic today. We're not going to be using all of this garlic, but when you use garlic, it has a papery wrapper on the outside of it and we need to take that wrapper off. And there's lots of different ways to do this. I'm pulling the cloves apart so it's easier to work with. And this is considered a clove. When it's like this, it's a head. It's a whole head of garlic. We don't want the whole head, we want some cloves. And these are mid-sized cloves. I'm gonna say we'll need eight to 10 of these. So we want to get all the peeling off you can do it by just peeling it with your fingers. If you have fingernails, it will help. That's why it's important for your fingernails to be so clean. This one has most of the papery wrapper off of it. There we go. Can you tell how shiny it is? In contrast to the one that still has the outside membrane on it, we want to get all of that off. But it's been about a minute, so we're gonna go back over to our tomatoes. They don't seem to be doing a ton, but they should be ready by now. So I'm going to plunge them into our ice water. We're gonna let those sit for a while. I'm gonna turn off the pot of boiling water. I'm gonna check the handles. They're too hot to pick up on their own. So I'm going to use some hot pads. My daughter made these for me when she was very young. We're gonna pick up our pot of hot water and we're gonna pour it down the sink. Be very careful so you don't get burnt. We're gonna save this pot because we're gonna use it to make our sauce in. All right. Now we'll come back to our garlic while our tomatoes sit in their water. So I showed you one way of peeling your garlic. It's easiest if you start from an end and kind of dig your finger in a little bit. Like that. There's another clove. Having a little bit of trouble getting it off. There we go. If you feel like your knife skills are very proficient, you can do a cool little chef's trick. I don't recommend this unless you are very adept with a knife. 
but I'll show you anyway because it's fun. You take your clove, you put your knife flat against it. You're gonna be using this part of your hand and you're gonna, I make a fist and I smash it. And that smashes your clove a little bit and that peeling comes right off. Once again, do not try this unless you are very confident with your knife skills because you could cut this part of your hand pretty severely. I'm hitting right up here on the knife, but I'm trying to keep it flat or slightly pointed downward so that I don't cut my hand. See how quickly it comes off? It is always easiest if you separate your clothes from the head. There are neat little silicone garlic peelers that some people have too. I think I have one that someone gave me. I can show you how those work too. This is a silicone garlic peeler. I find them a little bit messy. It's just something else to clean, so I don't usually use it. But if you have one, you just put your clove in and you press and you roll. And the paper comes off. Sometimes it'll smash your clove, but we're gonna chop it up anyway. And that should be enough garlic for the amount of sauce we're making. Sometimes garlic will have a little hard end on it. If it does, you can just pull that off. If it's not too bad, you don't need to worry about it, but if it feels hard, take it off. Okay, so we're gonna mince up our garlic. If you had a garlic mincer that you push the garlic through, you could use it. I'm just gonna use my knife. I'm holding my fingers curled back like this so that I don't cut the tips of my fingers. When you use a chef knife, this is called a chef's knife, this part of the knife stays on the board and it's a sliding motion. All of your power comes from the back of the knife. You shouldn't be doing this. If you're doing this, you're not chopping correctly. That's how you're gonna get hurt. So your knife should never leave the board. Do you see how it's just rocking back and forth? That's what we want. So practice. Don't ever do this on a countertop, especially a metal one, because you'll ruin your knife. You don't want to hurt your knife. So my fingers are curled back. My fingers are going to guide it, but I'm going to chop. I lift my finger when I get towards the end. I'm going to chop these all up. Don't go this fast unless you are used to using a knife. I'll do it slowly to show you. So if you're doing it slow, it's gonna be more like this. Safety is the number one thing you should think about here. So now that we have it in thinner slices, I'm still holding my knife, but my hand is going across the top to steady it. This part will stay on my board. I'm just gonna go back and forth and chop it into smaller pieces. And there we have minced garlic. We're gonna need this for our sauce. It's very important. Whenever you're cooking a dish, always read through your recipe first. The recipe will be included in the comment section. So look for that, there'll be a link to click on for it. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will check them and get back to you. So we have our garlic. This is Italian style parsley. I washed it, I just rinsed it in water. The best way to store your fresh herbs if you have them is in a little bit of water. Make sure the bottom is submersed and then put them in your fridge. This parsley I've had for almost two weeks and it's still completely fresh because I had it in water in the fridge. If you leave it in a plastic bag, it'll spoil in a few days. So, take my parsley and I'm gonna discard this part, but for now I'll just get it out of our way. I'm gonna do the same thing with my parsley. I'm gonna chop it. If you don't have fresh parsley, you can use dried parsley. You would just mix it with the dried spices in the bowl. And if you're lucky enough to have an herb garden and have fresh herbs, you can use all fresh herbs in this. 
In the summertime, I have parsley and basil. Sometimes I have oregano. My garden now has nothing because we just moved. Most of these herbs are perennials. That means they come back every year. You plant them once and you have them forever. If you take care of them, they'll come back every year from season to season. So we chop that up. It doesn't have to be too fine because it's gonna wilt when we get it in the hot uh, pan. All right, we have garlic, we have parsley, we have our dried herbs, we have our fennel. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Always clean as you go because it will make a difference. Takes less time at the end. The cleaner you work, the better it will be. Now, make sure you have none of that papery skin on your hands from the garlic. We're gonna grab our tomatoes and bring them over to our work surface. You'll want a bowl to put them in. Now, if you look at this tomato, the skin is peeling off. We're just gonna grab it and it's gonna come right off. This one, there we go. Now, if you don't have fresh tomatoes, you can use canned whole tomatoes. In the winter time, I prefer canned whole tomatoes because you can't get a decent tasting tomato in this town usually until summertime. So canned tomatoes are more consistent and might actually have a better flavor. So I'm taking all the skin off these tomatoes. I'm going to pour all of this down my garbage disposal. If you have a compost pile, you can put the skins in your compost pile. I don't have one started yet, so I'll discard mine. Don't put them down your sink unless you have a garbage disposal. Put them in the trash can. But I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way and dump it. But I'm going to save the bowl because we need to get our peeled tomatoes into smaller pieces. Now, the fun way to do this that I like to show when I'm teaching in a group is just to smash them. And what you do is you put your hand in the bowl and you just squish them between your fingers. Don't lift your hand up in the air, you'll get juice all over yourself. I'm just squeezing them and getting them into smaller pieces. If you don't like doing that and you don't wanna get your hand covered in tomatoes, I'm gonna wash, rinse my hand off so that it doesn't slide around. You can also chop your tomatoes. You don't have to smush them between your fingers. It's just a lot of fun. I'm gonna move my herbs and my garlic. If it gets a little bit mixed up, it's not that big of a deal because it's all going in the same pot anyway. But you can also chop your tomatoes just like this. I almost dropped the bowl. Be careful if you're working in a small space like I am. Little things like bumping your bowl could be the end of dinner. It could be the difference between having your beautiful sauce and having a peanut butter sandwich. If you don't have canned whole tomatoes or fresh tomatoes, if you have some cans of crushed tomatoes in your pantry, you can make it with that too. You can even stretch a fresh tomato sauce like this and make a larger quantity by mixing a can of tomato sauce in with it, if you have that. Tomato sauce, marinara sauce, all of that is so very forgiving. Whatever you have, if you have spices, you can turn it into a yummy dinner. Fresh tomatoes will give you the best flavor, but if you don't have them, work with what you have. We're gonna see how much this gives us. I may not need to stretch it, but that was all the tomatoes I have on hand. If you have a tomato sauce, you could add it, but you wanna do that later in the process. 
You could even add a tablespoon or two of tomato paste if you have that, if it doesn't seem rich enough for you. We're gonna start with just this though. And I'm gonna rinse my hands off because they're slippery. And in a moment, we're gonna go to the stove. So we have our dried herbs. We have our tomatoes, some chopped, some smushed. We have our garlic, our parsley, and we have our fennel seed. I'm gonna move the knife. You never wanna carry a cutting board through a room with a knife because you could get hurt. And I'm gonna go over to the stove. Have everything ready before you start cooking. That's always the best way. So we're gonna use our same pot. It probably dried itself out by now because of the heat from the boiling water. If it did it, you wanna take a towel and dry this. You don't want water in this when you get started. So I have my olive oil and I'm gonna pour a little bit of it into the pot. And I'm gonna turn on the flame to about a medium heat and let that get warm. I'm going back over to my measuring spoons. So for the fennel seed, a little bit goes a long way. We're gonna use about half a teaspoon to get started. We're gonna wait until our oil gets hot. What we want here is we want the seeds to pop. So I'm gonna do my best to be very quiet when I add them and we'll see if you can hear them. It almost sounds like tiny little popcorn kernels popping, but it's not as loud, obviously, because they're small. So your oil, when it gets hot enough, will look like it's starting to shimmer. It's hard to show that on a camera. I can see that it's starting to. I'm gonna get a drop of water on my finger and show you another way to test. I've got water. Can you hear the sizzle? It's ready. If you put a drop of water in and it doesn't sizzle, it's not ready. Be careful if you're doing that though, because it can pop. Make sure you're standing far enough away it can't hit you in the face. So I have fennel seeds. I'm gonna take half a teaspoon, and sprinkle them over the oil. Can you hear the popping? They're popping nicely. Now we're going to take our cutting board and we're gonna put our parsley in first. We're gonna stir it around. We don't want those seeds to burn, so this goes quickly. When the parsley starts to wilt, like it is now, then we add our garlic. We stir that up. We're gonna let this cook for a minute or two so that the garlic starts to brown just a little on the edges. If it feels like it's sticking, you might need just a little bit more olive oil. I'm gonna stir it up like that. I don't know if you can see the color change, but my garlic is starting to brown a little bit. So I want to add my tomatoes. This is the crushed up tomatoes. My tomatoes are in. I'm now going to add the dried spices. And I'm going to stir them up. And 
And there we go. We're gonna turn our heat down just a little bit and we're gonna let this simmer for a while. Now I predict I'm gonna want a little bit more sauce than this for my family, my family, excuse me. So I'm gonna open a jar of sauce and most likely and add to it, but I'm gonna let it cook for a little bit first because sometimes when the moisture cooks out of the tomatoes and they start to break down, it ends up making a little bit more than you would anticipate. So we're gonna let that cook for a bit. Now at this point, you can decide, what do I wanna eat this with? Do I wanna make spaghetti and put it on top? Um, what could I do with this? Oh, I could smear it on a piece of flatbread or a piece of pita bread if I have it and turn it into a pizza if I have cheese and other ingredients around. You can do lots of things with this. It's gonna need to simmer for a while. So we're gonna step back over to our cutting board for just a minute. And I'm gonna show you what my family likes to eat it with. My family eats a lot of vegetables. You should too, because they're very good for you. As a rule of thumb, you should try to eat as many different colors of the rainbow per day that you can. We're gonna eat our spaghetti with some baked fish, and instead of using noodles, we're gonna use spaghetti squash. So this is a spaghetti squash. It's a beautiful spaghetti squash. We're just gonna roast it in the oven, and while it roasts in the oven, our sauce will simmer. So when you have a spaghetti squash, you need to cut it open. I have my knife here that I had my tomatoes on. I'm gonna rinse it off, not because it has tomato on it, but because I don't want it sliding around because this can be a little bit tricky to cut. So we have our spaghetti squash. We need to cut it open, but they're very firm on the outside. So what we're gonna do is, normally I would tell you not to use the point of your knife, but we're gonna just stick it in and make a little incision very carefully pull it out. Now I'm gonna lay my knife flat in that incision and I'm gonna keep it on the board and see how easy it is to slide. I'm gonna hit it. Sometimes when it gets to this point, your knife will be stuck. The easiest way to do is to pick it up a little bit and slam it down. Don't worry about bruising, bruising the squash. We're gonna get it all out of there anyway. And you see it starts to crack, that's totally fine too. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, have a family member who's an adult help you because you don't wanna get cut. So I'm rotating it. There, now we have our squash in half. Now all we're gonna do with this is put it on a sheet pan that we have brushed with olive oil or if you have cooking spray you wanna use, you can use that. But these are seeds in here. We don't want the seeds, so we're gonna scrape those out. I'm gonna scrape into the bowl that we had our tomatoes in. No use dirty more dishes than you have to. And I've got a big heavy spoon and I'm just scraping. This is a little bonus lesson how to roast spaghetti squash. You can see, even with it raw, it starts to come across and almost look like noodles. If you've never had this, it's delicious. You're gonna be amazed after we roast it when you see what happens. And the leftovers only get better and better as time goes. I have another one I cut in half earlier. I'm gonna scrape the seeds out of that. The leftovers will last in your fridge for about a week. So if you end up having too much, just put it in your fridge and eat it tomorrow or the next day. Now the seeds, you can put them in your compost pile. You can throw them away. This is what the seeds look like. Or you can save them. You can let them dry out for a couple days and then sprout them and plant them you can plant directly in the earth if you don't want to sprout them first, or you can toss them with a little bit of olive oil and salt, put them on a cookie sheet or a pizza pan and roast them in the oven, just like pumpkin seeds. They're delicious and they have lots of nutrients and they'll get nice and crunchy if you roast them. So I will use my seeds in some method. Don't know what yet, I might just plant it. It is gardening season, but I'm gonna set these aside and save them. 
while I'm over here, I'm going to check my sauce and give it a stir. It's looking good. I can tell because I know how much my family likes to eat tomato-based sauces that we're going to need more of this. So I'm going to go ahead and open a can of tomato sauce and add it. When I originally decided to teach this lesson, I had 18 tomatoes, but we are all staying home to keep each other safe, and we've been eating our tomatoes. So we ate more than we realized. But this is tomato sauce in a can. It's a little thin, so we're gonna let it cook for a while, and it'll thicken up as it cooks. We're just gonna dump that in there. Use our spoon where we were scooping tomatoes. Make sure we get all of it out. And then stir it. We're gonna let this simmer and cook oh, for at least 45 minutes. In that time, we're gonna preheat our oven to 400 degrees. and that will roast our squash. So, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so I have a sheet pan. I'm going to put a little olive oil on it. And smear it around with my fingers. If you had cooking spray and you'd rather use it, you could. But I like olive oil. And then what's left on my hand I'm gonna rub the edges of this squash, lay them face down, or inside down, I guess would be more appropriate to say. I'm gonna put them flat side down. How about that, flat side down on a sheet pan. And we're gonna roast these in the oven once it's preheated for, we're gonna check it at 40 minutes. It might need a little longer than that, but it might be fine. The skin will start to brown and it will look like they're sinking in and that's when they'll be ready. So. We're gonna let these roast and we're gonna let our sauce simmer and we'll come back in about 40 minutes and show you what's happening. All right, thanks, see you in a bit. Our sauce is on the stove and it started to boil. So if you come closer, take a look at this. Do you see how it's bubbling? We don't wanna leave it that high because it will burn and stick. So we wanna turn our flame down to a super low. Can you see how small that is? We're gonna give it a stir to make sure nothing started to stick. And then we're gonna put our lid on it if we have it. If not, you could put a piece of foil on it, but if your pot has a lid, that's helpful. And we're just gonna leave it low like this and let it simmer. You might even turn it down slightly lower. All right, and that will simmer while our squash grows. Our oven timer is going off. We're gonna check our squash. It's been cooking for about 40 minutes. Oh, it looks perfect. This is what it should look like when it's ready. And while we're over here, we're gonna check our sauce. Ooh, it's thickened up nicely. Can you tell how much thicker it is? And I have a spoon that has holes in it and it's not coming through. So this sauce is thickened up very nicely. We're gonna let our squash cool for about 10 minutes so we don't get burnt and then I'll show you what to do with it. And then we're ready to eat it. We're ready to plate up our spaghetti squash and eat it with our marinara sauce. I'm gonna show you what to do. I have clean towel. I'm gonna, and I have a fork and a spoon. I'm gonna pick up the squash and flip it over in my hand. It's still hot, but it's been cooling for about 10 minutes, so it's not as hot. I'm gonna hold it and just take the fork and I'm scraping it. And I don't know if you can tell, but it comes apart like noodles. And you just put it in your bowl. We're just gonna do a small amount and show you. Look at that, it looks just like noodles. Now you could season this 
We make it look prettier. You eat with your eyes. Things that look pretty and not sloppy are more enjoyable. All right, so it looks like noodles. You could put a little butter on it and a little salt and some spices and eat it just like that. Or you could eat it as we're going to tonight with our marinara. We're gonna take it and put it on it just like you would spaghetti. A little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese if you have it. And you're ready to go. Enjoy guys, bon appetit.